Well, I think, I think in most of the clubhouse, in all the clubhouses that I've been in, that is kind of a staple of the communication. Everybody's just exchanging ideas and thoughts kind of all the time. Um, some people go about it different ways than others. In Pittsburgh, there were a lot of veterans to learn from, um, and certainly in Houston, there's a lot of veterans to learn from. Here, this year, with this dynamic specifically, um, I think Darren provides a really unique perspective. Um, certainly having, like, you know, Justin back. Justin was – Willie was one of the older guys in the clubhouse when I was in Pittsburgh too, and he loves talking pitching and and – kind of taking young guys under their arms um you know not super cozy and cuddly but um he's you know he gets the job done and uh so i think we, we're having a lot of those conversations right now specifically as names pertaining to the younger guys um i haven't i haven't had anybody come up um this spring uh as of yet but you know guys getting put in positions last year davy coming up clark mike i mean those guys are you know, whether it's pitching or just preparation related, um, you know, I just try to be a, a sounding board to, you know, uh, try to get them comfortable and acclimated in a new environment. And that kind of conversation's, you know, going on in the clubhouse now. And you obviously love talking about pitching, sharing your knowledge, um, like you said, being a sounding board, but you also have to do your work and focus on Garrett. Is that ever, is that ever something that's sort of tough to balance, sort of your role is? Um, you know, a clubhouse voice on this, but also a guy who also needs to just go out and shove? Yeah, I think I, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, I kind of talked about it the other day where baseball is a team sport and you have to win as a team, but there's individual preparation. Um, so ultimately, like, you got to take care of what you need to do to be prepared um, to perform at, at the highest level. So that goes to exactly what you're saying, finding that balance of like, okay, now's the time to focus on me and now's the time to share. Um, and I think we have a really good environment here in terms of everybody, you know, needs to take care of their own, take care of their own business and everybody's unique and how they prepare and how they throw and what their pitch repertoire is. And so they're working with the appropriate people, Zach, Matt, Hark, these kind of guys to try to, you know, perfect that craft. And at the same time, when they learn something, I mean, yeah, we should be sharing it with our teammates and we should be all kind of moving on the journey along, uh, uh, with each other. So, um, I try to make sure I'm prepared for the day to do my work. And then, you know, I just feel blessed to be in a position where, you know, I can talk about conversations I had with other veteran pitchers or other guys before that, um, it's almost kind of like our duty to, to, to pass on. So, Eric Boland, you have the next question. Hey, Derek, you um, you mentioned Robinson Chirinos uh, a few days ago when we talked to you. Uh, can you expand a little bit on uh, what you enjoyed about working with him in 2019 when you guys were with the Astros? Yeah, I, I just really enjoy the, the, the person. You know, I mean, um, you know, from a talent perspective, obviously he's been around for a long time. Um, I think he's always trying to get better, you know, just in passing today, he gave me a, a few tips on, on some of the stuff he was seeing yesterday in the one at bat. Um, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I recall him just, he was really into, you know, a lot of the game planning and, and, and the conversations and how we're kind of attacking teams as a group especially and especially in our division and carrying over you know what we experienced the last time we faced them and and jotting down some notes and some things and and carrying that into the next time and um you know i you know i just i i found that to be really enjoyable and help support the group and and also i got to know his family pretty well too I spent quite a bit of the postseason as you know families travel so um, I got to meet his kids who are super adorable. And so the connection kind of just goes beyond the baseball field a little bit. You go next to Bob Clappish. Bob, please unmute. Hey, Garrett. Um, with the news that uh, Carl Schmidt Elmer was acting off, and we were talking to Severino about his comeback from, from a John surgery, 
Just wondering, it, it feels like everyone in the rotation is injured or is coming back from injury, except for you. And what kind of responsibility that is, is that knowing that basically you're the one guy who can't get hurt. <laughs> and considering you're such a hard thrower and you know, there's a correlation between velocity and injury, I just wonder um, if you worry about that risk or you don't let yourself worry about that risk. And again, that, that responsibility that you're the one guy who can't go down. You know, there's a point where I think every year I kind of evaluate you know, what I did well. First of all, we all got to go through something at some point, especially if you're going to take the ball 30 some odd times, like you're going to pitch through, you know, something that's causing you pain um, every single year. And, and so, so, so dealing with that and learning how to navigate that is, is injuries are, are part of the game. Um, you know, I, I expressed the other day, I don't really have, it's not really my position to be concerned about all that type of stuff. And then relative, you know, relative to the other players. And then relating to myself, I think I have an evaluation period of like, you know, what did I, you know, what did I like um, about my preparation this year? You know, what could I do better? Um, and and then, you know, I, there's, a, there's a short window of like, you know, are we checking the boxes in terms of longevity and durability um, and always looking to improve um, and be smarter about those types of things. And then after that, you know, the mindset just kind of changes to getting the work done, and you can't be carrying that, you know, with you while you're throwing. So, um, you know, I've been healthy for a long time. I've put a lot of focus into it. I think my mechanics are in a good spot. They, they never really deviate, you know, far from really kind of the core fundamentals of the way I throw. And so, um, you know, I try to maintain those things and, and obviously try to improve among the margins every single year so that um, – so that I try to mitigate that risk just like anybody else does. But I, I, don't, I don't worry about it or think about it on a regular basis. So. Great. Thank you. Go to Max Goodman. Max, please unmute. Hey, Gary. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, you and Jay Bruce actually spent a handful of years playing against each other in the NL Central. Yeah. I was looking, he has some, some solid numbers against you. Yes, he does. Um, <laughs> what do you think he can bring to this roster this year if he cracks camp and plays with the big league club? Yeah, he's hit me quite well. Um, I, you know, he, he's uh, an intelligent guy. He's a pretty prolific home run hitter. I mean, got to be up there in terms of active leaders of home runs in general. Um, he's played in a lot of big games. Cincinnati was on top of their game when I started breaking into the league and had a full lineup. Jay was kind of at the beginning, middle beginning of his career and, and um, you know, has since hit the peak and, and kind of been able to, you know, stay at this level and, and continue to play, um, you know, in, in some of the biggest markets. And I think he's got probably a lot of knowledge from a from a approach standpoint. Um, you know, I've certainly been I've certainly been outsmarted by him and out executed by him before. So uh, there's got to be some value there that you know he can bring when he gets in the box or he can share with other players. Um, He's just, you know, he's a really, I mean, he's a really good player, a really nice guy, and and um, and so I'm glad to have him aboard. I, I haven't got to see him yet. Uh, I did text him because I had to navigate a rain delay with him one time, uh, maybe six or seven years back, and uh, so I was able to kind of touch base with him and text him when he signed. So that's the extent of the communication, and, and hopefully when we get over to GSM, we'll be able to spend some more time together.